If we don't have laborers, we'll have no harvest. If we don't have seed, we don't have a harvest. If we don't have rain, we don't have a harvest. If we don't have laborers, we don't have a harvest. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers into his harvest. So again, we can see. Why doesn't God just send laborers? He can't. He's asking us to pray to send laborers into his harvest. Not my harvest. His harvest. He can't do anything unless the church prays. And if, if, we, if I get no other point across, that's the most important point. God is limited by the prayers of his people. He can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks him. So we're waiting on God. He's waiting on us. And that's why we're all waiting. Yeah. We're still waiting. Now, let me, let me give you this statistic, and I'll make a couple of comments, and we're going to pray. If you were an outstanding gifted evangelist with an international reputation, and if under God you could win 1,000 people to Christ every night of the week, of every year that you preached, 1,000 a night, every night, for every year that you preached, how long would it take to win the whole world for Christ? Well, the answer is 20,000 years. <laughs> thousand a night, every night, 365 days a year. It would take 20,000 years to reach the world. Now, if you are a true disciple of Christ, and if you are able under God to win just one person to Christ each year, one person, that's it. And if you could then train that person to win another person to Christ, and if you could then train that person to win another person for Christ each year, and you know the process, one person, one year, you train that person, and then the next year you win another person, you train that person, they train a person. It would take 37 years to reach the world. Wow. <laughs> so you would win 37 people. That's it. But you train everyone that you won to Christ to win somebody. 37 years, which is about the lifetime of Jesus, a little more, to reach the world. Probably would have then because population was less. So think about that. We think, we, you know, and we need mass evangelism. Don't misunderstand me. Crusades. But we think that's the key. No, the key is if everyone in this church would win one person and disciple that person. Your church would double in one year. And then if you did the same thing the next year, you, you'd have to move out of here. In five years, you'd have to have a bigger building, pretty good-sized building. Right? It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Think about that. Just one person, and you disciple that person. So there's a, a friend of ours. He's in India. And... Uh, he has a program called uh, uh, Disciple Makers. It's in a province in India that's extremely heavily persecuted. So what he trains them to do is to find a family in their village, go to that family once a week, start fellowshipping, eat together, start sharing the gospel in story form. And about six weeks... They convert that family to Christianity and then teach them to do the same thing. They're at the point right now they're leading 10,000 people a month to the Lord. <laughs> so much so that some of the radical religious groups are now taking notice and are concerned and they're trying to pass uh, what they call anti-conversion bills, which means you cannot convert certain religious faiths to Christianity because they're having great success, right? So it's not mass crusades. It's simply people sharing with someone else and then discipling that person. Anyone in this church can disciple somebody. You have more knowledge. <laughs> you guys that travel know. You have more knowledge than the majority of people outside this country. Way more knowledge. It's just the time, right? 
the commitment, say, Lord, help me. Help me find the time, and Lord, help me find someone. And he will. He will do that.